because Sweet Bubby James isn't here. But uh, he is uh, standing right next to me, that obnoxious noise. We're trying to print something out. <laughs> so I am going to tell you that I am Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks. And, and I am Sweet Baby James, <laughs> otherwise known as James Maynard. As Sweet Baby James. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I was blocked. Would you not uh, get me out oh, of the sorry. picture, James? I mean, you know, <laughs> Didn't mean you know to. ego is one thing, but, you know, you, you should allow me to at least be in the picture somehow. Of course. Anyway, I'm just I'm Josh and with James. Okay. So um, anyway, I was very blocked about the show. And then a few minutes ago, uh, James and I uh, got discovered clear, the block, yeah. discovered the block, and now I know what the topic is. And so that's why we're at the last minute. And so I'm Beth Green. This is SVB And tonight I'm going to talk about why do we keep doing things that hurt us. Yeah. Why? Ooh, that's supposed to be a question mark, not an exclamation mark. Anyway, yes. So, but before we get into this topic, and Elizabeth said hello, hello. Sweet baby James, will you please introduce? Yes, uh, welcome yes. to Granny Rocks Our World. And once again, I do believe she is going to rock our world, <laughs> otherwise known as Grow. And uh, she shares her wit, her wisdom, and her uncommon sense every Monday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And that's where we are now. So take it away, Beth. Hello. Well, have you ever done this? You know you shouldn't. Okay, there's some food on the table. Forget about sugar. That's the, I'm going to get to that in a minute. But let's say it's garlic. Uh, bleh. Uh, Jamie says hello. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. A garlic something, and you uh, and garlic don't get along. Have you ever found yourself just somehow getting over there? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I'm not alone. Todd says, yes. Why do we keep doing things that hurt us? So oh, I'm so glad you want to know this. And Ryan said, hi, guys. Hi, Ryan. So good to see you tonight. So, uh, yes, we find ourselves doing things all the time that uh, that are hurt us. Some of them are really big and some of them are small. Like, oh, like, oh yeah, sometimes I'm overworking. I'm pushing myself. I'm staying up watching television when I should really get a good night's sleep. Or, you know, Island says, just entered. Well, you are welcome, girl, because we just started talking about why do we keep doing things that hurt us. So I was just talking about just a few things that hurt us that we keep doing. Do you have an example before I go on? Well, I discovered that uh, when I strayed from the diet that I knew I should follow, uh, it really uh, caused me to go into a downturn, cognitively and otherwise. And so uh, with your help, I was able to realize that, address it, and uh, take it seriously and uh, stepped up to the plate and I'm doing better. Amazing, right? If we stop doing the things that hurt us, we might actually feel better or do better. No, so why do we? All right, so let's just start with some simple things like because we're addicted. All right, anybody ever been addicted to anything? Mm -hmm. uh, addicted to love, addicted to sugar, addicted to garlic bread, <laughs> you know. Uh, addicted to gambling. I mean, there are so addicted to alcohol. Uh, there are so many things we get addicted. And I'm now I'm talking about the physiological issues around addiction. Well, I don't know if that would have anything to do with gambling. There, there might be an adrenaline thing. I don't know. But okay, there's physiological addiction. Like our body gets used to having some substance, and that substance wants that substance. Like oh, they say if you have a certain kind of condition, you your body. Uh, you know, craves the very thing that hurts it, like candida that makes you want carbs and sugar and all that. Okay. So I don't want to get deep into that because there's a lot that's been said about addiction, but I think we all have an idea what addiction is. And we all tend to get addicted. I mean, I could get addicted to like rubbing my nose. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't even have the itch anymore. So I get addicted. So you've gone to the hospital and you've taken a drug and now you kind of like that feeling and now you're addicted to it. Okay. Now, the second, but that's the easy part, right? Not easy to deal with, but I mean just the obvious. Okay, the next one that I want to mention is because we want it, the whatever it is. For example, I like the taste. Mm. 
Who are you looking at? No, no, it's me. <laughs> I mean, you know, I eat things that I just, oh, I love that crunch, or I love this, or I love the taste of fat and salty. I just love it, love it, love it. Or maybe I love the rush, you know, of like uh, having a car racing and going flying through the air and, you know, uh, kill people killing themselves right and left. Maybe I like the rush. Maybe I'm addicted. I'm uh, now. You see, I'm not saying addicted, but you could be, right? We could be addicted to these things too. The emotional Im uh, aspect. We can actually be addicted to, or really want the sense of purpose. Mm. Oh, I love going out and helping the poor because it makes me feel good, right? Or I love uh, going to work because there I feel like I'm competent. Well. I'm going even when I'm sick. Now, I may see the reason that I'm going because when I'm sick is because I need the money, but actually it's because I love that sense of purpose. And if I have to take care of myself and sit around at home, I would get bored and I feel like I'm no good. And this, <laughs> right? So, this is good. so I have to go to work. And I tell my, I make all kinds of excuses why I have to go to work, right? So, um, you can want something. You see what I'm talking about? Uh, you may be addicted to or craving or wanting more of an energy drink because you're desperate. You want energy, right? You don't feel like you've got it. So sugar, caffeine, you know, you're, you're, I like that. I want that. I want that experience. Uh, maybe I'm having an affair. And maybe it's because I like the way that woman feels or a man feels, or maybe I love feeling, you know, I'm getting away with something with my wife or spouse or whatever. So you, there may be something that you really, really, really want and versus what, well, what's going to happen if I do this? If I do it once, if I do it 10 times, if I do it under time, uh, I don't see the consequences. Maybe sometimes those consequences are too far in the future. For example, um, a, fr a dear friend of mine, uh, I had this intuition because I'm an intuitive. I told her to do not eat sugar like many, many years ago and not to eat cheese because I had this feeling that wasn't good for her. And she didn't see any consequences. But, you know, 20 years later, she had cancer, which she uh, is contributed uh, to uh, you know, by the sugar so and dairy and so on in her case. So um, the consequences are too far. It's like, I can't think that far ahead. You know, it's like we were adolescents. You know, we don't have fully formed brains. We, no matter how old we are, we still don't have fully formed brains, or the the brains we did have are losing. So anyway, we don't see the consequences because we don't actually see them directly. You know, if I if I had that diet drink and I threw up immediately, I might not do it. Although people I know have taken drugs and thrown up immediately and still done it. I mean, you know. But, uh, you know, I would have a drink and I would get a migraine like that, you know, and I still did it because that need was stronger than the aversion that I had at that moment. But for many of us, we don't see the consequences because they're too far in the future or we think that those consequences won't happen to us because I'm not like my dad who drank too much and, you know, became a bastard, you know. No, I'm not that kind of drunk anyway. I'm, I'm a sweet drunk. I just molest my children. Anyway, um, I don't think it's going to happen to me. And then by the time it does happen to me, I think, well, it's too late. It's already happened to me, right? Ah, uh, now, sometimes we think we can get away with it because dad did. He died at 102 and he smoked and drank every day of his life, right? So maybe I can get away with it. Or my wife will never know that I'm having an affair, even though I come home and uh, she discovers that uh, uh, there's there semen on my underpants and she does the laundry. You know, she'll never figure this out or that my personality has changed completely. But she will not notice this, right? I can get away with this. Now, all of these things factor into us doing things that we know uh, hurt us. But now I'm going to come up with the super duper whammy one. Is everyone ready, ready for, the, for the super duper whammy yeah, one? Yeah, Well, I think... The, the super duper whamming one is that we were all raised by adults or people older than we were, even if it's just a, a nasty older sibling, like a witch sister or brother or something. And they told us what to do. Well, maybe we didn't like what they told us. 
maybe they were just wrong. Maybe they were telling us to do things that were damaging to us, but were like in their favor. Uh, maybe they told us what to do, but didn't explain it. So it just felt kind of arbitrary, you know. Uh, maybe they were constantly overriding our desires. Oh, I want you to wear the pink dress. Well, mom, I hate the pink dress. Never mind. You know, that was a very expensive dress. Your Aunt Jeannie gave it to you. Wear the pink dress or those shoes or go out and play. I want to stay home. I want to study. No, all boys should go out and play or stay home and study. No, I want to go out and play. Whatever it is. Okay, so we have an association <laughs> that being told what to do by anybody is a power issue, right? Yeah. Somebody telling me what to do, even if it's the right thing. Mm. Well, it's a power issue. I don't like that feeling of being in the one down position of the power. So now I begin to get into this thing mm. as a, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to do anything and everything that I want just to prove that I am not under your thumb and that you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> now, as we get older, right, we start having the power. Some of us, even as children, you know, we could get away with anything. Uh, let's say we did have alcoholic parents. Maybe they were too busy fighting each other, killing each other, or drunk or falling on the floor so that they we could go out and do anything we wanted, but they weren't, you know, compass mendus, meaning totally there. So um, we might have gotten into the habit of getting away with things even then, but some of us couldn't get away with anything. You know. But in any case, it brings up feelings of being out of power. Juma said, very nice. Good morning, dear ma'am and sir. Juma, you made it live. How delightful. We are so happy to see you and a very good morning to you because I think she's in India and it's you know, probably morning there. So, um, and by the time you see this, it may be morning too, wherever you are. So, uh, let's say a doctor is telling us, okay, Frank, you really should stop smoking cigars, you're developing whatever, or you really shouldn't be doing this, or that you really should exercise. It doesn't matter whether it's a doctor, a spouse, a friend, a boss, or it's an association. I'm immediately put back into that feeling that I'm being told what to do. So I'm not able to indulge in the thing that I like, as I was talking about earlier, but I love the taste of sugar. By the way, when you stop eating sugar, you don't love it anymore. You don't even want it. It makes you feel sick and you don't even like the taste anymore, but you, it takes a while to get there. Um, that's true of a lot of things that, you know, we think that, that we engaged in. I mean, now I, I wouldn't, the things that I did when I was young, Ugh, I wouldn't even want to do them anymore. The sickening. But I didn't like being told what to do. I was always being controlled. I, I wanted to feel free. And so now I've talked about externals like, oh, the doctor, the spouse, or the friend telling us what to do. But maybe it's our own consciousness now that's telling us what to do. I know that I need to stop drinking you know, my liver or my health or uh, my waistline or whatever it is that's making you feel like you shouldn't do something or I'm obnoxious. Now, this is assuming you can't stop. I mean, some people are like just raging because, and that's another kind of thing. It's like, oh, I know if I get angry and I start raging at everybody, they're going to go away. Or I know if I withdraw, people aren't going to like me anymore, but I can't help myself. That's conditioning. We may have been so conditioned to that behavior that we don't, or we may have a physiological issue going on, a biochemical issue that makes us behave that way. I haven't even gotten into that, and that's an important topic. But now I just want to talk about the power dynamic. So supposing I know inside me that I shouldn't do something. Now I am the authority that I'm rebelling against because I don't feel powerful. Now, many of us had experiences when we were growing up that we had authority figures who were not supporting us. 
one way or the other. They didn't support us because they really didn't know. There's nothing happening. They didn't know any better. They were doing what they were doing because they were being driven. I know that I shouldn't hit my child, but that child makes me feel so frustrated. I don't know what else to do. It makes me feel like I'm the perilous one, and I just find my hand going up in the air, and I can't. And then I regret it, and I feel terrible, or I justify it. Right, so now I'm doing something out of my own sense of powerlessness that I find obnoxious and I'm doing it to somebody else. I know I shouldn't yell at you and tell you you should stop eating those things, but I feel so powerless, right? And I don't know how to get you to understand that this is hurting you or make you stop or whatever. And so now it's power again, you see? We're dealing one more time with, that's the only thing that I'm focusing on on this show, is the power dynamic. I feel powerless to stop you. I have a child who is um, in a bad relationship, a, an abusive relationship. I just want to take her and I want to tie her to uh, the, the dresser in her bedroom so she won't go out with that guy, right? I feel so powerless. And I know that I shouldn't do that. And that it's going to hurt us. It's going to hurt our relationship, but it's it's also hurting me. So what we're seeing is there's a lot of stuff here about power. Now, I just want to say one more thing about the internal things and the conditioning. I'd like you to think for a moment about some behavior of yours that you just can't understand. It doesn't seem to be about pleasure. It doesn't seem to be about power. It doesn't seem to be about feeling like nobody's gonna tell me what to do. A behavior that you have done, just if any of you wants to share that on the screen right now, please do. And I'll see if anything comes to me. While you're thinking and writing things down on the comment, I want to tell you that on Saturdays we have a discussion group about my book, Living with Reality. And if you go to my website, bethgreen.org, and you join my email list, you can download that book for free. And you can join this discussion group and there is a link in the post about how you get in touch with the persons who are running that group. And it's free and it's a great place to talk and get do some self-examination. Elizabeth says, why I eat when I'm not hungry? Well, because you're hungry for something. And Food is something you can control. I think many of us have, have seen this. We, we know we can get food. So if you are truly not hungry for food, you're truly hungry for something, and you're looking for a way to satisfy that. A lot of us eat out of anxiety. Don't you? I do. I eat out of anxiety. I'm not hungry. I'm anxious. What I'm hungry for is calm and peace, is satisfaction. A pacifier. A pacifier. That's what we should all do. We should all get pacifiers. <laughs> Instead of stuffing our faces with food, right? right? And, some, and sometimes it's, oh, and Todd said, thank you, Elizabeth and Beth. I guess Todd has had this experience. Another reason that we can eat when, when we're not hungry is because we want to do something that we're afraid to do, and we're trying to divert us into something else. For instance, I really want to have an affair, but I know that if I do that, that I could ruin my marriage. So I eat instead as a way of keeping me diverted from the thing that is very threatening. Elizabeth said it. 
I, yes, I eat. So I guess she uh, frequently out of anxiety, especially at work. Yes, I need calmness. Anyone else want to put something out? I mean, we could make a whole show out of this is why do we keep doing things that hurt us? Ask Granny. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anyone else who wants to ask a question tonight about something that they do? Because I, as I said, some things are biochemical or like, I don't know, I'm out of balance and I'm looking for a way to balance myself. That is very similar. I'm taking this drug or I'm eating this thing or I'm trying to have this experience because I am so messed up inside and I'm trying to balance myself. And for some of us, it's really a biochemical thing. Yes, James. I tend to go toward anger uh, whenever I feel um, one down and uh, I feel like that makes me feel powerful. Yes. Even though it messes me up and makes me all upset and uh, uh, all wound up. That's right. It's in that moment, the craving for that feeling of power is overriding your common sense. Yeah. Because it's that strong. Yeah. Todd says, why I stay late, say stay up late working when I really know I should be sleeping. Uh, Luann says, I emotionally in, in disappear. As in Todd said, I can relate to James too. Well, let me stay on just a little bit longer and talk about these things. And uh, maybe I'll come back and, and do this again. Uh, why do I stay up late working when I really know I should be sleeping? There is a moment. I'm just going to tell you this off the cuff, right? Because I, because I have done this too. If it's, you know, it could be working. It could be TV. It could be anything. Well, there are two possible reasons. One is that I'm afraid I'm going to get up the next day and I'm not going to be ready for whatever. It's like, oh, my God, I've been playing video games all night and now I have to get ready for school tomorrow and I haven't done my, you know, I haven't done my homework. And, you know, there's a lot of procrastination. So we wait and wait and wait until the last minute and then we're up and late doing the stuff we should have done the day before. So that is a lot of what happens. Of course, it's not a very good solution because then we're not getting the rest we need so that we can be functional. But another reason that we stay up late working or doing anything is that we hate the moment of quiet when we really feel what we're feeling and we can't stand that. So one of the reasons we keep doing things that hurt us is we're trying to avoid something else. Oh my God, I didn't even get into that topic tonight of how we're trying to avoid something else. So Todd, do you get, get what I mean? Is there something that you're avoiding rather than going to bed. Maybe there's something going on with your wife or something that's going on in yourself that you don't want to face. It's always good to do an inventory of yourself. Um, and Luann said, I emotionally disappear. Why do I do that? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can get something on that. And then I really do need to be quiet. Oh, Todd said yes. That means he understood what I said. I gather. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. And um, Luann, she says, why do I disappear emotionally? Because when you were a child, you could not disappear physically. You see, when you, are, when you grow up in an environment where you don't, do not feel safe, but you have to be there, you need to find a way out. There are many ways to do that. You know, one way is to make yourself high. You know, but as a child, you may not have it unless you're sniffing glue or something. Uh, you may eat something that changes your feeling state and makes you sort of blotto. You uh, find an excuse to run out and go play with your friends. Uh, but a lot of times we're forced to stay in a situation. Even Not only might we be getting abused, but we might be watching somebody else get abused. And we can't stand the vision of seeing our mother or our father or another sibling being abused. Uh, Luann says, how do I stop disappearing? Hold on, honey, hold on, wait. This is so much for me to answer just like this. Hold on. So I want first for everyone to understand. So if you emotionally disappear, then you are taking yourself out of the situation the way you learned to do as a child where you couldn't get away physically so you got away mo emotionally that's your power the way what i would suggest to you 
And right after this, I think I better stop for tonight because we're already way over. But um, I think the one thing that might help you is to say, okay, what is it that I'm trying to get away from? Just like, okay, when I was a child, I was trying to get away from abuse. I was trying to get away from seeing someone else abuse, the pain of that. And at that point, I thought I had no power. I couldn't get away from it physically. I couldn't change it. Do I have the power now to actually do something about it? I am not a child. Can I walk out of the house? Or better yet, can I address the issue that is making me want to disappear? So, for instance, if uh, you can do a, spirit, a redo in your own mind of going back to being a child and saying to whoever the parent was that was being abusive to either you or somebody else, you know, this is wrong. You need to stop. If you don't stop, I'm calling the police or something like that. You see what I'm saying? What you do is you take the action that you couldn't take when you were a child because now you can. Now, it's not easy. It takes a lot of courage to change these patterns. So you can watch yourself doing it in the past. And then when you find yourself emotionally disappearing now, you can say, what is it that I'm running away from? And why do I feel like I can't address it and actually talk about it? Because I bet I can. And that's very similar to the thing about Todd. Is like there's something that you don't want to deal with when you go to bed at night. Well, deal with it, honey. Deal with it instead of staying up working. You know, talk to the other person. Talk to yourself. I've got to stop. It's almost 7 o'clock. You only hired me for 15 minutes. <laughs> well, uh, I may have to come back and do this again. I loved actually answering questions. If, uh, you know, if you would like, I would like very much on our next show to respond to people in the audience, even if it's extemporaneously. I would love to do that. So please tell me in your comments after the show, you know, if you want me to do this more because I really like doing it. I love to help people. Um, and in the meantime, please like, please comment, and please share with anybody who, think, who you think is doing things that hurt them or others. And uh, that would be just about everybody. Elizabeth said, thanks for your support, Beth. I'm very happy to give it. And Luann said, thank you. And she gave me all kinds of symbols. And Elizabeth said, yes, it's helpful. Excellent. Okay. We will see you on Wednesday. Love you guys. Right. Oh, Island said, love you. Love mm -hmm. you too, Island. Yes.